I want you to be mindful of the things that are coming up. Thanksgiving, guys, the gatherings, the Christmas, you know this is my favorite time of the year. Man, I love it, love it, love it. I'm the kind, I'm a sap during this time. I mean, I'm watching um, all the Christmas movies. And of course, Home Alone seems a little weird now that I'm in the kingdom. You know, I don't know. It used to be kind of, but now it's kind of weird. It's a little strange, you know, I don't know. So I've had to adjust a little bit of that, but I like the cookies and the eggnog and the one without the alcohol, glory be to God. No alcohol in the eggnog, you know, get you some old regular eggnog, you hear me? Help us, Jesus. Help these church people, Lord. Glory to God. Don't put no rum in it, no nothing. Just dairy, glory be to God. Amen. And... Um, so I want you to be mindful of those announcements. We will have Bible study tomorrow. Um, we are, don't have as many Bible studies left for the year. So each one of them are valuable. Don't miss them. Glory be to God. Please uh, try to be here for those. Um, uh, we're going to be um, changing up some things in terms of administration and organization in the church uh, in terms of those that are serving and those who want to serve. So bear with us. We're working it out. It's a process. It's uh, easier said than done, glory be to God, but uh, we're making some headway there. And uh, those of you that want to serve that haven't gotten a chance to, we will get over to you. Let's welcome in our online audience. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> glory be to God. We thank God for you. Uh, we do recognize the emails and the kind words that you guys send and the responses in support of the ministry and the seeds that you guys sow. We appreciate it. Glory be to God. Rest assured you're sowing on good ground. And uh, we thank God that the word is working for you. We're going to begin to worship the Lord concerning our giving. Are you ready to receive? Yes. Amen. Glory be to God. Sound like we're in a pep rally, don't yes. we? Okay. And it's okay. It's a good game going on in here, glory be to God. Now, I want you to get a point of contact. Point of contact is something that you're going to release your faith on. Well, what does that mean? Don't worry about it. You'll get it. Just go ahead and act as if for right now, glory be to God. Now, you're going to release your faith based off of something that represents your giving. What are you going to do? You're going to say something out of your mouth. And you're going to act like the spirit realm is real, that uh, God is real, and that he actually heard it, and that the Bible is true, and what it said about you doing that will come to pass in your life. That's how we're going to release our faith. Amen. Are you ready? For those of you that are joining us <coughs> online, uh, if you would like to give, please go to awofc.org. You will see multiple options there to do so. Are we ready? Yes. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity uh, to be a part of the kingdom of God. You've taken us out of Egypt and a place into a place where we prosper continually. We celebrate that. We're grateful. We worship you. Now, Jesus, high priest, we come before you, giving you the glory, giving you the honor as is due to you. Take our tithe, high priest, and go to the Father and worship him on our behalf. As you do that, we believe we receive the windows of heaven open to us and the blessing being poured out in overflow that as we've given, it shall be given unto us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, Running over, men shall give into our bosom. Now, I want you to repeat this part after me. In the name of Jesus, I decree I have tithers' rights. And that the wealth of the wicked is transferred to me, my house, my affairs, my business, my ministry. My family. my family. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. I take it now. Take it now. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord be to God. Amen. You may have your seats. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're doing pretty good on time. I like it. Have mercy. All right. Here's what I want you to do for a second. I want you to, there's this guy named Smith Wigglesworth. Anybody ever heard of him? Yes. As you recall, is that my nephew acting like that back there? Certainly. He's not doing that in churches. Well, glory be to God. That's when you look at you. Kids and nieces and nephews and say, I'll be to see you. That's what you do. I'll be to see you. Don't worry about it. I'll be to see you. Well, glory. Okay, we can move on now. Okay. Diamond said, okay, you can keep moving, Uncle. Keep going. Okay. Um, anybody excited about the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. You know, I have to say, man, I know for some people, church is a drag. I am having a good time in life. Amen. I'm telling you what, I, I can't even, I can't even front. Like, I'm having a good, I got a good life, you know? Amen. The word is really, really working for me. Amen. Now, I believe it's because I practice being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Amen. Now, my job is to is to edify the church as the pastor, which means to build you up and equip you for the work of what? The ministry. The ministry. Who does the work of the ministry? Is that the pastor or is it the people that the pastor is edifying? So that's you, right? My job is to minister to you so that you are not only convinced of the work and know what work to go do, but that here's the bigger goal, that you actually go and do it. Amen. Now, your service to the Lord is connected to your total fulfillment in life. Mali anasono koroba santeri kanokota. Let me say this. There's two sides of this thing. And they work together. I have a destiny and a purpose in life that at some point I'm going to stand before God and sort of answer him and be judged by him in reference to if I completed it. Because before you and I came to the earth, particularly those of you that live in this generation of grace, believe it or not, and I can't spend time teaching to go into this, in the spirit realm, you existed before you came to the earth. In the spirit realm, you were a spirit. As a human being, you and I are spirits, and we have what? A soul. What's your soul? Your mind, will, and emotions, and then that all lives in the body. Well, you didn't just become a spirit when you came to the earth. You were a spirit before. And for you to get in the earth at some point, I believe that there was an agreement between you and the Lord that said, Lord, if you will allow me to be born in this time, I will go and do what you have designed for me to do. Now, when you're born, because you were born into a flesh suit, a physical body, that flesh suit is almost like a robotic suit that has its own temperament, that has its own uh, sort of desires. And its temperament and its desires were created and fashioned and tweaked by Satan. You know, we talk about Satan's real name, which is what? Hell El. So Hell El was his name. Then it became Lucifer, or translate Lucifer translates back to Hell El. When he fell, he became Satan, or the adversary, right? And uh, his nature affected the body suit that you were born into, right? So when you get born into this suit, even Jesus himself had to figure out who he was 
before he came to the earth. Did, let, let, me, let me come over here and say that. In, in other words, even Jesus, the Son of God himself, had to spend time uncovering who he was in order to become who he was designed to be. So the human being is sort of born trying to figure out, number one, how to meet his or her own needs, and also instinctually trying to get back to a state of peace with God. And we do it different ways. Some have done it through, um, you know, their careers. Some have done it through relationships. Uh, some have done it, like me, you know, through the streets and uh, uh, irresponsible living, you name it. We all, no matter what we're doing, tr are trying to meet our own needs in one way or the other. Now, the way Jesus got his needs met, found out who he was, and accomplished his purpose is by an information source. Anybody know what that information source is? What is it? The Word of God. Are you sure? Yes. It's the Bible, glory be to God. That's a compilation. You know, the Bible's a compilation. It's not a book. It was due to the fact that the words on those pages were alive. And they were real events and that they were true as he began to investigate and study and meditate on those, it's Does that make sense? So if he had to do it, you and I as believers, we're going to kind of have to do the same thing. Is that right? Yeah. Now, if the Bible, I have to say this again. I know I say this a lot. If the Bible is not real and it's not true, then all of this is irrelevant. That means, Al, everything that has happened to you from the streets to the pulpit to corporate America is a fake, a fraud, and a sham. And if that's the case, I'd have to say it's a good fake fraud and a sham because it's working for me. If faith does not work, then I would have to conclude that I have signed up for the best possible lifestyle in the earth. Now, I say that from a little bit of experience because I've lived a lot of different ways. I've lived, uh, I know what it is outside of Christ to uh, be sort of in the normalcy as it, as it pertains to working and corporate America. I know what it is to be born in the streets, essentially raised in the projects. You know, I've, I've been to prison, I've been in gangs, I've been addicted on drugs, I've I've seen this thing from a lot of different sides, and none of them compare to living by faith. Glory be to God. Well, I've had some good times. Don't get me wrong. Now, ain't no use you sitting up here acting like in the world you did not have any fun. Is it, are you going to say that? Are you going to sit there? Are you going to tell me when you would turn it up? You never had fun? I don't know about you. I had a lot of fun when I was in the world. And I didn't have regular fun. I did big things, big fun. But I'm telling you, and I'm not just saying this as a preacher, none of it compares to what I have now. Yeah. Now, you know when preachers say stuff like that, usually they're saying, none of it compares to the joy I have on the inside. Well, I ain't just talking about the inside. I'm talking about the inside joy. I'm talking about enjoying life and my money too. Yeah. You don't mind if I include that, do you? Well, are you still here? Have you gone home? God is a good God. There is an amazing, wonderful, 
phenomenal life available for you. And if you've been born again, your job is to learn how to receive it. It will not show up for you automatically. Unfortunately, the majority of the things that you've heard preached to you since you were a kid, can I tell you something, were false, are not true. Is that a nicer way to say it? Let me think of another way. Are not actually even in the Bible. How about that? Mary had a little lamb. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Glory be to God. This is what the gospel has been reduced to. And in this lifestyle, if you don't experience the supernatural, if you don't experience the power of God working for you, you know what you'll do? You'll look for an alternative. That's how you end up over in, there's this land. What's it called? Weirdo land. Weirdo land is the alternative living for believers. Boy, gangsters move over to weirdo land quicker than almost anybody. You know, here in Columbus, you guys know I had a, an association with a particular area here in Columbus. Um, and uh, I know those guys still watch and, um, you know, seen a huge transformation. And something about people that have calls on their life. See, even before you get born again, there is still a call on your life. And you instinctually begin to sort of manifest those gifts wow. associated with what you were designed to do. And for a lot of people like me that was in the streets, it shows up in characteristics like leadership, charismatic abilities. I've got this other word for charismatic abilities. You know what it is? Swag. Shows up and stuff. You know, just you just have a tendency to sort of affect the environment that you go into. Now. The devil used the, the uh, unholy preachers to uh, steer you into going to, steer us into wrong places. Anybody know who those unholy preachers are? Rappers. Are you ready? What are they? Rappers. They're the rappers. They're the rappers. He, he, he uses them, and they're not just the rappers. Who else? Let's name some of them. Let's put them on blast. <laughs> What a, don't just pick on the rap music. What other kind of music? Country. Uh, country music. The most depressing aspect of music in existence. Dog died. Cat did too. Might as well get under the table somewhere, right? Rock and roll, you know. Cut heads off animals and carrying on. and Heavy metal. and What about more normal stuff like pop culture, you know, Billy Eilish, which I've been on some Billy Eilish and I ain't giving her no break, glory be to God, that most of your kids are addicted to, not my nieces and nephews, <clears throat> um, okay, I won't say no more about that, and um, Taylor Swift's and so forth and, and so on, now the Beyonce's, which Mind you, when Chelsea and I were delivered, when these demons were coming out of us, when they were coming out of Chelsea's body specifically, obviously I was there. And these demons, when they're arrested, they do what people that are in an irresponsible criminal lifestyle do when they get arrested? What do they do? Submit. What do they do when they get arrested? Resist. What do gangsters do when they get arrested? Is it okay to talk like this in church? Yes. You don't mind if I talk like this. I'm going to talk like it anyhow. don't matter if you like it or not, but talk like it. What do the gangsters do when they get arrested? What do they do? Nobody knows this? They, she said snitch. We got to have a church friendly word. We can't say that on camera. 
They tell, glory be to God. Now, the demonic kingdom is the root of what you see show up in organized activity here in the natural realm. So you learn these habits, you learn the mentality directly from the demonic realm. I don't care what circle you run with or you identify with, wherever your identity is being pulled from, it is either being pulled from the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness. There is no in-between. It's being pulled for one, from one or the other. And it's multifaceted, that kingdom of darkness is. It's multifaceted. It's layers. There's ranks. There's a lot going on there. And they're going to, these demons were exposing how they got in there. And we heard just the most amazing things. We would say things, I would say, in the name of Jesus, who are you? Now, I don't recommend you do that unless the Lord has anointed you and told you to do it. You, do you understand that? Some of you staff people especially, you need to use wisdom if you're going to deal in warfare and you better have faith. You don't approach a demon without faith. This won't turn out right. In most cases, they ain't going to even listen to you anyways. They ain't going to do nothing but laugh at you. If they have already manifested or played with you or deceive you, have you, you don't know whether you're coming or going. But they're real, right? And the, we heard things like one demon said, I got here through, and I'm paraphrasing this, sort of the idol worship of Beyonce. I got here through music. I got here when the parents got divorced. I got here when dad cheated on mom. Or nowadays, you know, mama would cheat on daddy too. It ain't just daddy cheating on mama, you know. Society makes the, the man sort of... Uh, you know, uh, sort of a, uh, has tried to make the man into a predator in society. But you need the man in the household, glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. You need him. I know you should act like you don't. You do need him. God, uh, he is not <clears throat> going to be the head. He has been created in headship. Now, does that diminish the woman? No way, no sir. She is not his subordinate. She is his what? As his equal. She is his equal. The weaker vessel means he needs to spend more time loving her, but it does not mean she is inferior in any way, form, or fashion. And any man that treats the woman that way, he's missing it. And I just have to stop for a second and say, what in the world am I even talking about right now? None of this has anything to do with what I'm supposed to preach. But I must just be speaking by the Holy Ghost. Glory Amen. be to God. Amen. You know, some of these demons got there through, and you've heard this one. Uh, Chelsea, as a lot of you know, uh, years ago, uh, when Obama was president, went to Tennessee, and uh, while he was there visiting schools, Biden was there too. If I told certain things about Biden, I could possibly be arrested, I'd say. Or at least kicked off of Facebook, so I won't do that. But true story, you guys know me, I don't have much of a filter in that regard. And uh, they're traveling, they go to, to a university, and while they're at this university, they meet this girl who just blew them away. They just fell in love with the personality of this girl. You know, some of the words, well, she's beautiful, she's sweet, kind, smart, yada, yada. And then they offered the girl uh, to come to the State of the Union address, which also came along with uh, an offer to intern in the White House. So that was Chelsea. That's your first lady. Glory be to God. Isn't that something to celebrate? That's your, you can give a better clap than that. It's okay. I mean, you know, don't hate. Don't hate, you know, let, let, let her live, glory be to God. Go and congratulate now. And, um, 
you know, she, while she turned down the internship, because during the time, even though we were not walking with the Lord, the Lord was dealing with us. See, the goodness of God does what? Leads a person to repentance. Well, where does that leading start? While a person or before a person has repented. So he will lead you while you're in your mess. You see? He will draw. The Bible says no man can come to God except he be drawn to himself. Unless God is drawing you. So he starts to work on people before they ever realize that they really needed to be saved. How many people were here and came in here and thought that you already were saved and got here and find out, uh-oh, I missed something. Lord, I receive right now. And then your whole life changed, right? And so she decides to turn it down. And she goes over to Spain for two months. By the way, during this time, she gives me an ultimatum. She was like, marry me or else I ain't coming back. And I was like, man, well, I was like, well, I guess she's going to be staying over there because I ain't married nobody. But I couldn't bear to lose her. I somehow realized she was my only ticket out. I had gotten myself in a mess. I was, on the, I was an on-the-run preacher. A backslidden pastor that ended right back up in the streets, right back up in the same gang, a fault to get out of, an affiliation, and this was my ticket out. I don't know how I knew it. I just knew it. Glory be to God. And uh, at any rate, she turns it down. She goes over there. While she's there, she goes up to the coast by Africa. And while she's up there, you know, she was a cultural individual. She loves, she has always loved experiencing different cultures. You know the pressure on the millennials, you know, today, right? That uh, unless you are, you know, soaring the skies and traveling international, you're not really significant. Now, you know that's a lie from the pit of hell, don't you? Your identity can't be drawn from that, but hers certainly was at the time. <laughs> so she goes up there and she sits down in the commune. And the native people of that area had, were in a circle, and they were preparing food, and they were dancing around the food. Come to find out, they were preparing food that they were sacrificing and praying and offering up to their gods. Isn't that interesting? To their gods. Now, she said that they were smoking. She said, you know, I used to smoke a lot of marijuana. She said, babe, but this kind of weed they were smoking is something else. She said, they didn't even look human hardly, if I recall, after they would have hit this big, long peace pipe, right? And uh, she said, I didn't touch that, but the food, I tasted it. I ate it. Well, here I am casting the demon out of her practically a year or so later, and the demons say Exactly that when she went to Africa and she ate the food, we entered her body. I didn't even know she went up there to Africa. And you know how many people in this generation are partaking in other cultures, thinking it's harmless, and inviting the devil right into their lives. TV is deceiving folks, making you think that it's just cultural. There is no such thing as an atheist nation on the planet. Every single nation or country on the planet believes in a higher power. Every single one of them. The U.S. is no exception. There are people in the U.S. that try to say, well, we're atheists. No, you're not. You believe in something. What you believe in is the issue. But around the globe, there is no mystery, there is no secret that every country believes in something. What you're believing in matters. Amen? Amen. Well, glory be to God. Yes, we'll move on. Have mercy. I may have about 10 minutes left. Let me adjust my clock. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the ability and the privilege to hear words from heaven. Words that have life in them, that change natural situations, that answers questions, that break bondages that can't be broken naturally. And Lord, I pray that the anointing that cooperates with that working will flow and operate on me today. That this word that is preached will come out clear in accuracy and boldness and the needs of the people will be met. Now, Satan, I break your power and cancel your assignment. I decree that this word shall come forth unhindered by you or any of your camp. In Jesus' name, if you agree, shout amen. Amen. All right, I got to move really quick. I got to answer some questions. Now, in James chapter 1, we're going to move through this kind of quick. We've been talking about most recently as last week uh, concerning being a doer of the word and not just a hearer. We found out that the technical definition for that is called mentally ascending. That means when I hear the word, I believe the word, but I don't do the word. So the vast majority of Christians live right here. They hear the word. We believe it, but we don't actually do it. Well, here in James, I want to remind you of this verse right here. In verse 27, actually verse 25, it says this, King James. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. What is that? Where do you find that at? The, word. the Bible, right? That's in the Bible. The revelational aspect of the Bible. What about it? And does what? Continueth therein. He being not a forgetful or neglectful hearer. Continuous means consistently engages. Nothing in the kingdom works without consistency. You can't pray this month and then not pray for uh, two months from now. Take two months off prayer and expect the blessing of, of God, the power to prosper to work. You know, you can't read the word this month and take off for a month and two months and expect the benefits of what's being preached to work in your life. You know, you can't, you know, you can't sleep around, you know, this month and then take off next month and don't sleep around and pick back up sleeping around the next month and think things are going to work out. No, these are going to stop the blessing. Here's why. Here's why. In Isaiah, the 54th chapter, which we're not going to turn to right now, I just need to say it real quick. Isaiah 54 chapter, spiritual law is recorded. Now, here is something that Jews believe and study, Muslims and Christians. We all agree on one thing. We all believe in the Torah. We all believe in the Septuagint. There's no debate. I mean, I'm telling you, I have preached to Muslims. I have gotten Muslims saved, glory be to God. I'm telling you, we all agree on those first five books and the Old Testament in general. We believe and agree what the prophet said is true. It's the New Testament where the beef starts, right? Well, in the Old Testament, Isaiah 54, God is recorded through the mouth of the prophet Isaiah having said this. I'm going to paraphrase this. This is what he said. He said, Al, when I created the heavens and the earth, there were no other gods. It was only me. When I created the spirit realm, the realm that is operating what? Beyond what? 186,000 miles per second, which by the way is what? That's where the spirit realm is. It's past the speed of light. Go past the speed of light and tell me what you see. It's there. Right? Scientists have been able to prove this now, right? That's why they had to take Darwin's theory out of the curriculum in school back when I was coming in middle school. They had to take it out because their instruments prove that matter can exist beyond 186,000 miles per second, even though you can't see, touch it, taste it, hear it, or feel it. Right? Now, he says, when I established or created 
the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural and all the laws that would govern how they interact. The what? The laws that govern their interaction. What I did is I swore by myself. Come up here, Brother Church. Let me demonstrate this. Glory be to God. Got to, got to turn tricks up here for church people to get them to stay focused. This is what you got to do sometimes. Church people, see? Now, he said, Brother Church, when I established these things, I, I put laws on how they would hop, operate, like gravity. Gravity is a law. What goes up, what? Gravity pulls down. Must come down. It, it's a law, right? The laws of what? Faith. Faith is a law. The laws of seed time and harvest. Spiritual laws that, by the way, aren't taught in the majority of churches in America because you just come to church, have a user-friendly service, and go out to go and corral after it's over. And you still razzle-dazzle, have no idea what you heard in church, ain't done that for you. Right. Leave that alone. But he said, so what I did is I swore by myself because there were no other G's like me. Big G, you yeah. see? There wasn't no more. Right. So I swore by myself, and here's what I swore. I mean, I made a covenant, Brother Church, and that covenant had the penalty of death connected to it for me as a God. I gave the power coming out of my right hand. The Bible says that's where the power of God comes out of. He, you have a hand because he has a hand. He's not just a blob in the season. Being. He has legs. He has feet. He's got a head. Amen. In the spirit realm, if you saw him, you would see he has a body that looks just like yours, right? Wow. You were created in the image and the likeness of God himself, right? And he said, I gave the power in my hand the ability to establish itself as law. And I gave it the power to say, if I as God ever go against this law, these laws that I have established, then I give you permission to ungod me. Mm. Now here's what's crazy. Why have we gone to church all these years and have not heard this? Wow. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. Why have we only heard Mary had a little lamb? Why have we only heard Noah built the ark but have no idea why the ark actually was there, why it needed to be, you know? Right. And if I go against any of these laws, in other words, I swear I will never break the law of faith even if it kills me. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Now, the entire Bible has to be read in that context. Yeah. Am I too deep for anointed word of faith church no. here today? Are you sure? No. Are you still here? Have you gone home? Still here. Do I got a few minutes left? Come on. You know, Chinamen and Gold Corral's calling on you. Let's go. Got to bring you some crackers to church so you can, you know, help in a little pain, you know. <laughs> and he said, I swore by myself that if I go against them, that I would ungod myself. And if I ungod myself, all of existence will essentially explode. So you know what? All of this time, he has never gone against it. Yeah. Now, who did he swear that for? The believer. Who did he do that for? Us. He says the believer, anybody disagree? The world. Every, his creation. Everybody and everything that was created, that includes the angels. Yeah. Everything. He swore that. Why did he do that? Mm. To hold himself what? Accountable. Accountability. Wow. So that you could trust him. <laughs> he didn't want you to be born a mindless robot that just did whatever. He wanted you to know there's rhyme or reason to what I do. There's levels to this. Mm. He wanted you to know after you got saved, it's real out here in these church streets. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Now... When you get over into the necessity of hearing the word and doing it, 
listed here in James, James is talking post-kingdom existence. James is talking to people that are now alive after the kingdom of God that was in heaven came to the earth. And everything these apostles are saying here in the New Testament is telling the people that are alive that have been born again and that are now living in the kingdom how the kingdom operates. Wow, yep. And he's stating that the kingdom of God operates by laws that he himself cannot change. He's never been able to change it. If he could, when Adam and Eve did what they did in the garden, what would have happened? He would have stopped it. He would have stopped it. You mean to tell me you knew everybody was going to die? You knew cancer would come into the earth, killing people? You knew all this war and this hell and this poverty would come in the earth and you call yourself a loving God and you don't care enough to come in and stop it? What kind of God are you? I don't care what you think about this and I love you. I don't possess the ability to serve that kind of God. If your character is not bigger than that, then I'll holler at you. I got to do something else. <laughs> if you're not better than what I could be, then I might as well be on my own. Right. And I lived a good portion of my life thinking that way. No, he didn't step in because he could not. Right. Yes. Well, in your situation, it's the same as it relates to your needs. He cannot break his laws to meet your needs. That's really good. Do you get that? Yeah. Ooh, that is. So the purpose of church is to find out how the laws work and operate so that you can hear them and what? Do them. Do them and get, you know, I meet people all the time that want what I have. I'm telling you. You know, I, when I was in prison, I was in prison with a guy that had like a life sentence for murder. And we all knew each other from sort of the same areas. And he had a nickname. And uh, he just had just an amazing, just a crazy swag. He was just so he was just smooth with it. He'd be like, they, my nickname, I'm, this is my Jesse Duplantis anointing right now. <laughs> you know, he gets uh, specific. And uh, he would call me, he'd be like, AK. That's what they called me at the time. He's like, AK, guess who my name is, man? I said, what is it? He said, man, call me most hated. Most hated is what he called himself. I'm the most hated because they want what I got and what I've accomplished. I'm like, well, you, you're in prison for life. Man. <laughs> Is that the accomplishment you're referring to? Uh, you're not going home. Like. But he, I meet people that will see, I actually meet people that will come and look at my cars and in their perception, they assume I've always had those cars. They look at my house and assume I've always lived in a house like that. They look at the company and assume I was just born with Creative Consults LLC. That this church has been here for 30 years, you know? So they want maybe what I have, but they're not willing to do what I did to get it. And here's the thing, I did have to do something to get it. I had to learn that word, hear it, and actually do it. Yes. That's how the results come. It is not magic. Here's what magic is. Magic is results that don't require your cooperation or participation. The kingdom of God isn't founded on magic. It's founded on faith. Hearing and action that corresponds to what you've heard is where results come from. Does that make sense? Amen. Are you still here? You're right, yeah. so? Yeah. Now, hearing the word and doing the word, if you don't do it when you hear it, then what you actually do is set yourself up as an enemy to the agenda of the kingdom of God. Can I talk like that in this church? I preach this to clients all over the country, flying around everywhere. I preach the gospel to them.
And the unsaved people grasp this just like that. Yeah. It'd be the Christians just like, uh, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> wow, that's deep. No, the, the unsaved people are like, they almost want to scream out, glory be to God. <laughs> oh, there's a God? Well, glory to him then, because that's great news. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. I was told I was in the park, and I was in the park in Black Lake Park, and I was praying and walking, and God stopped me, and we start talking about spiritual law, what I just explained to you. And he said, man, when you talk power, it just, just goes through my whole body coming out of your mouth. I have goosebumps and just great news and said, I'm going to have to go home and meditate on that. Wow. Where did he know anything about meditating on the word? You see that? Yeah. That's God drawing that man. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the preaching in church is considered to be a supernatural thing in the sense of real preaching has the power of prosperity in it. I'm telling you, you got to get this. You got to see past, you got to see past Al and really get what I'm telling you. Amen. I'm telling the preaching has the house in the preaching. Yeah, absolutely. The house is not necessarily in the bank. It's in the preaching. Do you understand? Yeah. The company is in the preaching. The marriage and successful relationship is in what is being preached. Yeah. Now, Babylonian living is different. Babylonian living is is the prideful stance of man where man says I'm going to meet my own needs without God. That's where man has decided and taken the position that he is sovereign. That he does not require an overlord. And it's not true. Every human being requires an overlord. And you have one or the other. Yeah. Either Satan is your overlord or God is your overlord, Jehovah. Now, everybody that was born was born with a satanic overlord, Satan. Everybody that was born. You were born dead. Every human being. You were born dead. You are born separated. You do not become alive until you make a decision to be born again on purpose. Amen. For that, you need knowledge. Yep. That knowledge has to be declared, spoken, or preached to you. Right. Life and death is in the power of the preacher. That's right. Whether you live or die is in the mouth of the preacher. It's that serious. The spirit realm is a very real realm, folks. It's much more dominant than what you can see here with your eyes. As a believer, you begin to learn how to navigate in natural living through the rules and the laws and precepts of the spirit realm. Does that make sense? Is that not good news? That should help out with this whole mystery just a little bit, right? Now, the kingdom has an agenda. And the agenda is to occupy until I come. Jesus said, occupy till I come. Here's what occupy means in the Greek. Are you ready for this? It's about to make you run. <laughs> right here. That's where that anointed is. Here's what it means. Advance and hold. Advance and hold. This is the mission of the believer. While you're in the earth, until Jesus comes back, you are to advance aggressively against Satan's kingdom and activities. What is his kingdom and activities? Man, listen, Satan wants, he's into big boy stuff. In the world standard, Satan in the lane, he, he wants, he... He's off the porch. Do you understand? He's off the porch. He's, 
he's not really the middleman. He's the plug. Do you understand? He's, he's playing for keeps. He's not, he doesn't talk about murder. He is a serial killer. He is a psychotic, mass serial killer murderer. That's what he is. He's not playing any games. He's cold with it. He really is. Because he's been doing it for billions. Not thousands of years. Billions. He's been around. Right? Now, he took the money. You see? He took the money. Where is your money? Satan has taken it. You're advancing is to go and take the money back from him. Amen. But you can't do it naturally. You got to do it supernaturally. Yes. See, the world's spokesman doesn't have supernatural advice. They don't know how to do it. So they tell you counterfeit things like, man, chase the money, bro. Get to the man, get get to the money, man. It, it's okay if I talk like that in church. Okay. Yeah, preachers ain't supposed to be talking like that. With all them ebonics and carrying out, glory be to God. See, they don't actually have the answer. They don't know that as long as the earth remains, everything in it is governed by the law of seed planted, seed cultivate, and seed harvest. See, they don't know that. They don't know that there is success or failure in the light in your actual tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, they know that words have power. They just forgot the God part with it. Right. Uh. Right. You see? Yeah. You know, New Age and so forth and so on. They know some spiritual laws, but they don't have the whole picture. Yeah. God says for the believer, quit wasting time. Roll with me. I'm really the one that knows how this thing works. And go back and get your stuff. Yeah. Now, can we agree getting your stuff is initially, particularly in this church, in this generation. I'm going to tell you the kind of people that are coming to church in this generation. Are you hearing me? The people that are coming to church in this generation, what like this when I was a kid, are people that are coming to get something from God. Right. Yeah. These are not people that are necessarily coming to serve God. Yeah. Okay. No, that's true. That's absolutely true. This is where I'm safe at if I say it from right here, you see? And, and as a result, I'm coming to get something from God, and if, if he doesn't give it to me right away, or within the time frame of my tolerance, then I'm going to be like the boyfriend that threatens the girlfriend that says, if you don't, I'm going to leave you. And that's the mentality of Christians, wow. unfortunately. Shouldn't be. Now, is it wrong to get your needs met? Now, you know I'm a prosperity preacher. You know it ain't wrong. What are you talking about? <laughs> You can't get nothing done if your needs aren't met. I don't care what kind of call you have. You will never fulfill it if you don't learn to get your needs met. Your bills are real bills. They must be paid. Amen. Your body is a real body. It must be healed. Amen. Your family must be protected. All these things matter. God knows that. But he's saying, I've already provided that. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, hallelujah. Now, you've got to go ahead and take that quickly. You don't spend your whole life as a believer trying to get your needs met. Wow. It's just like sin. You don't spend your whole Christian life, the first 10, 15 years of your Christian life, Learning how not to sleep with somebody that you're not married to. You, you don't, you, what are you doing? You get that established right away so you can get, get the business. The best sex is in marriage anyways. I, I mean, you've heard my testimony. I've been, I had literally some sort of female acquaintance in practically every city 
major city and state in the entire country. While in a relationship, trust me, it does not suffice. None of it compares to a committed, monogamous, Holy Ghost relationship. Glory be to God. Yeah. Nothing compared. Can't tell me nothing. I'm ruined. I done done it. I done, been, I done done it. I done been with everything. Can't tell me nothing. This is the best. Glory be to God. Amen. And I did it spiritually. You heard my testimony. I got to say this part. I got to say this part in the book. So after, right after I got delivered, since right after I got delivered, I had been with so many people. You know, sex is mental and spiritually, not just physically. Yeah. That I messed myself up to a point to I no longer possess the ability to be attracted even to one person. No matter how much I forced my, myself, I just couldn't do it. I had to reprogram wow. the intimacy in me from the inside out. You know why I did it? I got in the Word and found out this weird scripture. Are you ready for it? Married folks, but I would say tell the kids to go out, but the kids already know more than the adults anyways on the telephones. In a marriage, if the intimacy ever starts to wane, even physically, you use the word to get it back. I went in that word and I found out it said this. Let her breasts satisfy you at all times. What I found out, I got revelation of it. See, the word that works for you is the word that you unlock. Right. Not that you just hear, you've got to unlock it. Because it was hidden from Satan for you. Right. Which means you've got this New Testament is locked up. It is coded. You've got to unlock it, and you can't unlock it by yourself. You've got to get around the anointing. Yep. You've got to get around people that have unlocked it so they can show you the principles conducive to unlocking. But after they show you, you got to start unlocking, glory be to God. <laughs> you got to go get in there and turn the key and get what you need. Well, when I saw that text, it said this to me. Al. As a result of a covenant marriage relationship with your wife, I placed supernatural power between you that would work to bring total satisfaction to you and her at all times. Amen. To the point that you don't even think of or consider anybody else outside of the marriage. Now, if you knew me, you would know that was supernatural. <laughs> and it worked, glory be to God. I said, what trying to tell what you, what did I tap into something here, glory be to God. Amen. And to this day, I got one girlfriend, glory be to God. This one, glory be to God. Totally satisfied, don't need nothing. To, the scripture says, don't even go down the street of a strange woman. I don't even go down no other streets, glory be to God. I stay on my street. <laughs> Chelsea Avenue, glory be to God. That's where I stay. I don't go no other neighborhoods. See, they're wearing all kind of colors. I got to stick with my colors. See, I can't be they safe over there, you see? Glory to God. Amen. Now, now listen. The agenda of the kingdom is to advance. So the preaching here in church is not just to get your needs met. It's to get you to advance, to go meet the needs of the world everywhere you're assigned. That's the agenda right here. Now, in this text, which I'm going to have to pick up tomorrow because I'm out of time, that uh, I can't preach it if you don't do it. Yeah. Let me just show you that before I close out. You may get mad at him, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. If you got to go, go on and go. Glory be to God. Listen to this. In Hebrews, turn over here with me really quick. Show them this uh, uh, media team. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6. 
Hebrews chapter 5, I apologize. And look at verse 11. Look at this. This is my proof. Look at this verse. If you have it, say, I have it. I have it. If you're looking, say, I'm looking. Wow. Now watch this. This is what Paul, the apostle, the apostle, the man of God, is saying to believers. He's not saying this to unbelievers. These are people that had already gotten born again, which means they what? They heard the message. Right. And they received it so much that they acted on it and corresponded in action out of their mouth by saying, I receive it, Jesus, come into my heart, make me born again, right? Amen. These are people that had already done that. These are also people that were like AWOFC people that were hearing the mysteries of the kingdom week after week after week, and some of them was crazy enough to start doing it. Amen. Some of them were crazy enough to walk away from the drugs, some of them were crazy enough to walk away from unhealthy relationships and situations and believe God, change jobs, change locations, and everything else, and have this testimony. The word is working for me. Amen. Those kind of people. But look what Paul says to those kind of people. Of whom we have many things to say. And hard to be uttered. In other words, in the Greek translated here, we have so many things to tell you that would advance the kingdom of God in your life and in your purpose, but we're not able to teach them to you. That's what uttered means, to teach. We can't teach them to you. That'd be like, Pastor, that'd be like me saying, man, I, got, I have such revelation that I want to get to you, but I can't get it out. Pregnant over here, glory be to God. Then gained 20 pounds, and I can't get this baby out. <laughs> Why? Why can't I get it out? Seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now, don't get mad. Don't get sad. Don't get razzle-dazzle. Just hear this. I can't, he said, I can't get it out because you're dull of hearing. What do you think that means? What do you think, Sister Trey? What's that mean? Dull of hearing. Okay. She said you don't hear the message. You heard it so much that you don't even want to hear it no more. Okay? What else? You don't listen. You don't listen. You don't listen. You have a hardened heart. You got a hardened heart? Ooh, this is good uh, Sunday morning church <laughs> uh, statements right here. Get your Hey, glory. Did you get your tongue? What did I just say, Lord? I don't no attend idea. to the word as a lifestyle. You don't attend to the words and lifestyle. You know, there's a much easier way to get these definitions. Just go look them up. But since you have it, I took the liberty to do it for you. Seeing your dull of hearing is the idea of spiritually lazy. Spiritually lazy. By proxy of mental ascension. Hearing the word wow. and not doing it. So these are people that heard the word and received it. And they heard revelation considering they were being taught by the apostle of revelation himself, Paul. <laughs> they heard it. And when they were sitting in the pew, they was like, oh, that's good. Glory be to God. That's it. I see it. But then... They did not do it. Now, do you see when they did not do it, it shut the mouth of the prophet. Wow. Utterance 
would no longer flow. He was restricted to going back down to Mary had a little lamb. That's what he had to go back down. Because do you see we're in partnership right here? What I preach is connected to you doing what I'm preaching. If you don't do it when I preach it, then we all stay stunned. We can't explode. You look around that. Well, I ain't more people in church. You got the nerve to blame me. <laughs> Have mercy. Like, ain't nothing wrong with my anointing. That word is working for me, glory be to God. You do an internal investigation, you see, it's working. My bills are paid, glory be to God. By the grace of God, go where I want to go. Go where I want to go. If I don't want to go to work for two weeks, I don't have to go if I don't want to. But it wouldn't be a good idea, so I'm going to go right now. <laughs> but after I'm done working, I'll be off again. <laughs> I'll be off again. Glory be to God. Now, you take off work if you want to. It ain't going to turn out right. You better go to work. Now, but, but just look at this. See the adult here. Look at verse 12. Watch. Watch. I know I'm over my time. I know I'm on, y'all just pray for me after serving. Yeah. Say, Satan, say this, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus name Satan, Satan, we break your power, break your power concerning, concerning condemnation, condemnation of Pastor Al, of Pastor Al for, preaching so for preaching so long. Today. Today. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Yeah. Woo. Now I agree, I receive it. When I go in my office, I will not feel bad. Don't nobody come and tell me how long I went. Don't tell me, Victor, how long I done went. Don't tell me. I don't want to see it. I already deleted Facebook anyways now. But look at this. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, instructors, ye have need that one teach you what? That means you've already been taught. These people have already been taught. Right. To the point that they should have been instructors and teachers by this point. Yeah. These were proficient people. You have need that ye be taught again, which be, watch this, the first, print, the bare basics. Mm. Right. AWOFC, let me reintroduce you to the bare basics. Every transaction in Christian living starts by hearing the word of God that covers your situation, believing it, saying it out of your mouth, and acting correspondingly to it. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're not getting results, you have stopped doing that. And it resets you. You got to start over again. Now you razzle dazzle about how the steps even work. Now you need 10 scriptures instead of a phrase. All you just need is by his stripes I'm healed. See, you got to go get 20 scriptures now because you done gotten razzle dazzle. You done got all in your mind. And you done got all analytical. And now you don't know what's going on. Ain't nothing left to do but cry. Why is this going on? Why is it crying? Then you won't have me counseling for five, ten hours. I can't do it. I have to go to sleep. I'm not your God. Amen. That word. Has anybody ever noticed in counseling? Have you noticed this thing, what I do? I repeat to you usually whatever I preached that Sunday, previous Sunday. That's what I do. Yep. I just re-preach it to you. That's all I do. If you do it when I preach it, can I tell you something? You won't really need me. Yep, absolutely. You'll need me more if you don't do the word. You see, let me tell you something. Let me help them understand this. <laughs> I very rarely... If ever. I'm not a 2 or 3 a.m. call taking pastor. Do you understand that? Yeah, don't, you, don't call me at 2 or 3 a.m. Because you know what I'm going to do? 
I'll answer. Are, are you ready for this? You know what I'm going to do? I ain't going to answer. I'm going to wait on the text message to determine is this something I'm needed for or if it's something I'm not needed for. Now my staff, my core staff, it's different. My core staff literally has access to me 24 hours a day. You know why? Because they're carrying the rest of the church. And they already know that. But I'm telling you, if you do the word, you will not need me. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't go and send me no letters and get upset and razzle-dazzle like, well, Pastor, don't want to talk to me. Don't, don't even take it there. We will still accommodate every request. We're there. You know, if there's something going in emergencies, we are there with no question. Praise God, yes. Okay, we will do that, always have. But, you know, you don't, you don't come. Pastor, my husband just really got on my nerves yesterday. Can I talk to you for three hours? No. <laughs> three hours. No, you can't. They don't use you try because I ain't going to talk to you. And I can't even put it off on Chelsea no more either. She was screening her calls too, glory be to God. I said, man, you ain't screening no calls over there, ain't you? She doesn't. She don't know. She's so sweet, she doesn't know how to say no. Now, principles are oracles of God, and to become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Next verse, and we'll close with this. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Unskillful means lacks actual experience in it. Here's my question to you. Why do they lack experience in it? Because they've not done it. Are you unskillful in the word concerning your healing? You heard that Jesus was a healer and by his stripes you were healed. But when the sickness hit your body, did you stand against it? And did you keep standing and keep saying until you got the victory? Or did you conclude it doesn't work? It, when, here's the thing. When the sickness comes on you, please get a balance of this. If you don't know whether or not you should go to the hospital, listen to me. You should absolutely go to the hospital. Yes. Do you hear me? Let me say that again. When the sickness and disease comes and you are unsure as to whether or not you should go and get treatment or go to the hospital, you absolutely 100% should go. Do you know why? Because you're not in faith. And if you're not in faith, be real about it. God will start you wherever you can start at. You say, Lord, I can't believe, I've been, listen, had a, a cold symptoms come on me. And one option is just to believe God for that flu to be gone, just like that. In Jesus' name, flu, you go in Jesus' name. And uh, I had to look at where's my faith. And I said, well, Lord, at this moment, my faith may not be there for that, but I have faith to believe that this cold sinus and flu medicine is going to work with it. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Right. And I received that medicine by faith. Mm. Thank you, Lord, and by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. And Lord, I believe, Chelsea and I agreed, we believe we received that when we take this flu medicine, it's going to work better than it ever has on anybody. Amen. That it's going to cause an effect and a cure, work it in me day by day by day. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And I took it, and I started getting better day by day by day. Do you see yeah. that? Yeah. Glory to God. Come on, everybody standing. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise before we close up. Did you get something out of that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to read this statement from Brother Copeland as we close out in prayer. And I want you to just consider this as you leave. And our Brother Copeland wrote this in faith 
for faith. And he said this, talking about Hebrews here, he said, therefore we ought, the scripture says in Hebrews 2 and 1, therefore we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Listen to this. It's happened to all of us. We get a little of the word of God under our spiritual belts. We have a few victories. Our lives are going great for the first time in years. Then suddenly we slip and it all falls apart. We find ourselves having to start all over again. That's what happened to the people the book of Hebrews was written to. They made such great spiritual progress that they got to the place where they should have been teachers. They slipped back so much that they needed baby food again. What caused them to fall so far? They let other things get in the way of their faith. They let the promises of God slip, so they slipped. That's happened to a multitude of believers in the last several years. Well, Brother Copeland, they said, we're tired of that faith stuff. Or we just don't have time to spend that much time in the word. They've turned their attention away from the promises of God. It's not that they didn't believe them anymore. It's just that they directed their attention to other things. They let their word level drop. And since low word level equals low faith level, they soon began suffering defeat in areas where they once had victory. Don't let that happen to you. When things are going well, don't just ride the tide of God's blessings. Dig deeper into what God has for you. Give more earnest heed to the promises of God. Concentrate on moving ahead, on becoming so strong in the spirit, and you can not only get your needs met, you'll meet others' needs as well. Remember, low word level equals low faith level, which equals slip. Isn't that something? Yes. That's sobering, right? Now, I wouldn't expect a person that's not been born again to have any concept of that. But believers, I wouldn't expect religious people to have a concept of that. But word of faith, believers, that's huge. All right? Do we receive that? Yeah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, you should vote. Yes, you should vote. Believers are political. You should vote. And you should vote the principles of the word of God. Don't vote against policies that contradict the word. You should vote. Get up and go vote. Now I'm just interpreting what I heard in the spirit when I prayed in tongues just now. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, we thank you for your word. We call it life. And Lord, we believe that exactly what we prayed here today before we started has happened. We believe that the word came forward and we received it in excellence, accuracy, and boldness. And that the word was, is being confirmed and will be confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles and those who hear. That quest, questions were answered, Lord. That needs have been met. 
I thank you, Lord, that the blessing has been released in here today and it is currently working in the name of Jesus. Yes. Seeking someone that will cooperate with it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for the believer that has taken it, that has received it, that the results they receive is exceedingly abundantly above what they ask, think, or require in the name of Jesus. I pray corporately right now for any healing that's needed. If we're going to pray corporate, corporately for healing, if you need healing in your body while the anointing is moving, go ahead and raise your hand. Quick, 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 while the anointing is moving. If you need healing in your body, if you've got pains, if you've got inflammation, if you've got any sort of sickness, abnormalities in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to agree with you and after I conclude this prayer, you need to believe that you received it. You take it and you walk out as though you got it and you listen for the instruction of the Holy Ghost as to what to do next if you don't get simultaneously healed right now. Amen. If you get healed right now, just receive it and keep it. Don't change your confession. Keep it. But if not, listen to the Holy Spirit. Keep your confession and walk in it. In the name of Jesus, right now, I say according to the authority of the word of God and the precious anointing of compassion flowing through me in Jesus name I say be healed in Jesus name in Jesus name be healed keep those hands up keep those hands up if you need healing keep them up be healed in Jesus name thank you Lord just receive it like you receive everything else by faith be healed in Jesus name thank you Lord Jesus be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name thank you Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord. Korendelese, konda ba konde ya so kronda. Be healed in Jesus' name. Mashe korendelese korandosa. Be healed. Receive it with boldness. Receive it with boldness. Receive it with boldness. Victorious, not the victim. Victorious, the head and not the tail. Receive it with boldness. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name, the healed. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed and every bit made whole. Healed and made whole. No fear because I am the healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Corondelesia, corondelese, mani corondo, so corondo. Same word. Same word in the name of Jesus. Do it. Do the word. And it will work in wholeness. Do the whole word, and your life will accelerate in Jesus' name. Mandelese, corondo, la conde. The word is affecting the cure. Healing is manifesting day by day. Glory to God. Getting better and better in the name of Jesus. Healing is good, but prospering from the inside out in the name of Jesus. Prospering even as my soul prospers. Amen. Take it right now in the Thank name you. of Jesus. 
wholeness. Lord. Don't doubt it. Thank it's working. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be easy. Be easy. No, don't complicate it. Just be easy. Simplicity. Thus saith the Lord, I work in simplicity in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, intuitively receive me. I work in simplicity in the name of Jesus. Give me time to answer the questions. Give me time to work things out. Don't panic in the name of Jesus. Don't panic. I've been doing this a long time. Thus saith the Lord. I'm good at it. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The righteous have never been forsaken. so Koronda. Begin to declare what I say, not what you see. Stop and think before you say. Get involved with me and I'll get involved with you. Get involved with me and I'll get involved with you. Mola sakaraebe korota. Don't get involved with me and I'll have to break things off of you again. I will have to use your brother to break things off of you again. It's not designed for things to continually be broken. Get involved with me and I will bring fulfillment. Thus saith the Lord. My brother, my brother, look, come up here. Come up here and be restored. Stand right there. No, turn around and face me. Mako ono sanele kanda. Enebe and aso korondale si krata. Restoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Restoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No korondale sen. Sister Lori, send him up here. Send him up here. If he won't come, bring him up here. Come on. Makare yene sele dobo so korondale. But church, come and stand behind him. Don't touch him. Malia na se ne koro bo san de leko. Mari enanti ne koro. Come on, pray in the spirit. I bind every distraction in the name of Jesus. Play the music softly. Malia ko no bo san leki ne bo konda. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kandere sam amandi e koronda leki. Mostarando coron de leki ando coron tanesa. Mo coron tanesa crota seketi. Mo coron darese. Moro tarese ki antere seki matokota. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft that is cooperating against this ministry. I want you to all to repeat after me and turn it down just a little bit. I want those who can and will to repeat after me. You're going to have to trust me. Say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we, break every curse. we break every curse. We break every hex. We break every, hex. We break every spell, we break every spell. Against, against this church, against this church. And, the it, and the people in it in their finances. In their in their relationships. We take it. Freedom. Satan, you go. You go now. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. That's what breaks it. That praise breaks it. I'm going to say...
Can can I say that, Lord? I heard a man of God say this, and it made an impression on my spirit. And I'm going to declare this to this house. Witches, warlocks, you'll be walking in, but people will be carrying you out. Because the judgment of God will fall on you. I'm telling you, witches, warlocks, if those of you that are dabbling with witchcraft, very dangerous place to be in here, I'm telling you, final warning, final warning. If you are touching witchcraft, this is a dangerous place for you to be. They, you will walk in, but you will need help getting out. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. We don't allow witchcraft in this church. Glory be to God. Jezebel has no dominion over here. Jezebel opposes strong leadership. Just so you know how Jezebel's spirit works, it will brag about the leadership publicly, but undermine the leadership privately. And will never do the word being preached. That's a demonic witchcraft spirit. Maliko no koronda We're not going to tolerate you. Yeah, devil, I feel you pushing back, but I don't care in the name of Jesus. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not here in my strength. I'm here in the strength of the Holy Ghost. Devil, you know me. You know I'm not playing church. You know I mean it. You know I know the power of God, and it works in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, turn it back up just a little bit. If you get called out by a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom in the church, it's a good thing. It means the Lord is involved in your situation. And he's involved to help you. But if you don't take the help, that call won't be there. That anointing isn't going to bring you up here. While it's here, while we're small enough so that I can see you by the anointing, take it. Receive it as a blessing. Take the blessing now. Glory be to God. If you're in the seat, no use you trying to figure out nobody else's situation. Figure out your situation. Glory be to God. You could be up here too. Glory be to God. Maybe you've already been up here. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Love is the motivation to do good to you. That's the motivation. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, sometimes, sometimes the enemy will do things to you. Talk, talking to you specifically right now, he'll, he'll get you in a place mentally. Yeah. Is there are people that you don't know that are praying against you, don't realize that are praying against you, cooperating with the enemy, it's causing hindrances to take place in your life mentally. The majority of the hindrances you're experiencing are mental. They're not just natural. The source is mental. And Satan is behind it. Glory be to God. Sometimes you get over into a place where you need agreement. You need an anointing to break you out. And the anointing will break you out. But you got to stay out. Anointing takes you out of. Takes you out of a a low place and set you up on a high place, glory be to God. And then you get on that high place and you just ride the wave, glory be to God. Glory be to God. I'm just going to take it. You receive that? I receive it. Now I'm telling you, when I lay hands on you, we will, it will break. Whether or not it stays broken, Thank you, Lord. 
a portion of it is going to be on you. There's a portion of it that will be broken and never come back. There's a portion that's going to be broken and won't come back again. It's reached the end. It's The assignment of that devil is over. A portion is going to be broken. It'll never come back. It'll never come back. In the, in the name of Jesus, I break your power, Satan, right now in Jesus' name. You take your hands off the man of God. Malia no so coronda la caite. Me coronda le si tamo. Ma coronda le si a carate. Me corota. Come, come, come here. Come here. You've not seen it yet. Come up, come up here. Stand right there. Stand right there. Coronda la si a coronda le so corota. You keep skating. You, you keep skating. Malia no so coronda le cando sa. You just, you come some of the way, but you're not coming all the way. You're not coming all the way. God, it won't work. It won't work that way. you got to come all the way. The, the Bible says, I'd whether you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, then you're bitter. I spew you out of my mouth because bitter, bitterness will still be a part of your life. Bitterness, that's unfulfillment. Lord, why not? Why haven't you? But you got to be hot or cold in the name of Jesus. So precious. So precious. You have not done anything wrong to be in this position that you're in. You have not done. Oh, I'm a you have not done anything wrong. You need a touch of the anointing in the name of Jesus. Oh, devil, I see where you've targeted them in the name of Jesus. It's right. You couldn't get it off by yourself. Not this. You couldn't get it off by yourself. Not this. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. I know that you wanted to. I know that you wanted to. The Lord says, I see. I see your heart, but we're going to break we're going to break the power of the enemy today in the name of Jesus. I decree that there is therefore now no condemnation against you in the name of Jesus. By Sunday, by Sunday, by Sunday, that's it. 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 It's broke. It's broke. No law, no order. It's against you. You're free in Jesus' name. Come on, saints, praise with them. This is victory. This is celebration. This is victory. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The wonderful praises. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Come over here, my sister. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over Come over here. Come over here. Come over Sister Tressa, come up here, Sister Tressa. Come over here. Come on. Come over here. Come over here. Come on. Come on. You gotta, you're connected to this. To this dynamic somehow. Come on, you're gonna lay hands on him. Uh, Mama Gracie, come up here. I need a I need a zero tolerance faith. Mama Gracie, that's what you have. A zero tolerance faith. Come on. No coronda le sicande. Bandolese coronda le kiantasa. You know the Lord is gonna break some things open for you. You know that? There's some things you've been believing for privately. And the Lord hears it, glory be to God, because they've been coming up with faith. You're not going to even have to worry about that thing anymore. What you've been worrying about, and, and the worry has come out of your mouth. It has, but the Lord is going to get involved in that situation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Maloso. <coughs> As the two of you lay hands on this woman, I believe through a partnership anointing between me and God that an impartation is going to flow into you. That impartation is being a doer of the word that you hear. And an impartation of real faith. Stability. Stability. Bani kononda le sanda koro balasi karende sekola. Now, no magic. There's no magic at the altar right now. I'm just mixing my faith and cooperating with God. And if you do it, when I lay hands on you, that point of contact with this oil will cause exactly what I just said to work in you. Yeah. Miracles happen at the altar all the time, folks. But you got to keep the miracle. Healing and deliverance comes out every time. It happens every time. You got to keep it. There's no magic to keep it. There's no magic. Say this in Jesus' name. In Jesus name the, anointing the anointing is not magic. Not magic. Power, Power that requires, that requires your, cooperation. your cooperation. That's where my anointing stops at, right here. I don't have the anointing past that. I don't have it that. I can only operate within the anointing that I have. That anointing is faith-based and word-based. And the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, will tell you what to do. You've got to do it. You've got to decide. Will you do it? I won't even touch you. If you're not going to do it, I won't even touch you. Is today the day? Or should we wait for another day? No pressure here. If today is not the day to be free, we should wait until later. I'd rather keep my strength. Is today the day? Thank you, Lord Jesus. What am I doing? I got to wait on the Holy Ghost. It's not my show. I'm just do what I want to do. Glory be to God. I got to wait on the Holy Ghost. See, it's not spooky. Just real power. How many of you see? You've seen this before. It's nothing new. Glory be to God. We've seen them healed. We've seen them delivered. We've seen them saved. We've seen them restored. Glory be to God. There is no failure in God. The power works. Saints, listen, listen. Boy, I'm under the Holy Ghost. This is what's happened. I'm the son of the good old Holy Ghost. Saints, you've got to start telling the truth. You've got to start telling the truth about what's really going on in people's lives. You've got to tell the truth. I'm not trying to spare any feelings. We don't want to spare feelings. We want people to go free. You've yes, got hallelujah. to tell the truth. You don't love them if you will not tell them the truth. Yes. Amen. Now, some of your situation I do know, some of your situation I don't know. More <laughs> Some of it I know and some of it I don't know. Glory be to God. The Lord tells me periodically, Al, quit asking. 
quit asking because it ain't going to do no good. She's not ready. She's not made a decision. Lord be to God. Now, this decision, I, I, come and stand over here, my brother. Come and stand over here. Stand right there. I told my son, this union, this connection isn't flowing right. This connection isn't, this is not the way it's supposed to flow. There's, there's, uh, you, you got to decide and, and then you compromise. You're co you compromise. And you, you, can't, you can't compromise. You're, you're a hindrance to her when you compromise. You got to stand on your square and don't move. You stay there. You don't. You don't coddle. You don't. Innate, you don't move. Your your God is your God. Her God is her God. You you won't be the counselor. You won't be the counselor. You won't be the instruction. You'll be the demonstrator. Amen. Now, if you would both cooperate with God, he would cause some things to work out that you don't even realize. But you've got to want God more than you want him. You, you've got to want God only. Women, you go to God first. Then you get the man. Men, you get God first. Then you get the woman. Forget the relationship. Get God first. You're doing you're just delaying the process. You could be you could be cuddling in two months if you just do it God's way. So you're just making it longer. You could be cuddling. You could be going on dinner dates and everything else. Go would be to God. And if it's time to move on, move on. Amen. Praise God. God reserves wisdom rights. If He says go, go. Don't delay. Amen. Be willing to miss it. Because if you miss it, he'll just GPS you right back Amen. to where you need to be. Amen. Step out. That's right. Don't be in between. Step out, glory be to God. Move on with the instructions of God in your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Good old Holy Ghost. Amen. Good old Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'll break you off of all of it, the Lord says. Ah, you won't need nothing. You, you won't need nothing. My sin did it, I am enough, always have been. For today is the day of total salvation. Today is the day to be whole. My Leane Corondalisando. Lord, I pray and I release you. To make all crooked ways straight. Not just by behavior, but from the inside out. Good old practical holiness living. I speak holiness over you. I speak a chaste conduct in the name of Jesus. I break secrecy off of you in the name of Jesus. No secrecy. See, secret is, secrecy is connected to condemnation. Be free. Be free, Be free. out of the open in the name of Jesus. Come on, lay hands. Come on, lay hands right there. Get right there. Come on. They has right there. In the name of Jesus. Malese coronda la sia care de su crote. Baisha corona. I break the power of the devil off of you right now. Satan, I cancel your assignment. Right now in the name of Jesus. 
We impart stability. We impart real faith. We impart holiness. Holiness. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Commitment, Lord. Decision. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Destiny. Destiny. Release. Time to go to work. Time to go to work for the Lord. You can do it. Yes, you can. That's a lie. You can do it. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Come on up here, uh, Sister Tadger. You're supposed to have a... Your employment level is supposed to be higher than it is. You're supposed to be making more money than you're making. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus, I break any sort of poverty off of you in the name of Jesus. I come against every poverty curse. I come against every bit of tail mentality. Because I decree that you are the head and not the tail in Jesus' name. That you are above only and not.